Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone where we're doing AP Physics and today we're going to be dealing with friction on an inclined plane. Okay, so if you haven't watched the other one where we dealt with forces on an inclined plane, all of that is still going to kind of play into field where you draw your uh, free body diagram and your normal force, the most important thing other than the, the sine and cosine part, is that the normal force is only going to be equated to this part down here, which is how much gravity is affecting the block on the incline. Okay, so gravity is actually the hypotenuse of this little triangle down here, but the only part that is affecting the normal force is the part that is essentially lined up with the block, which would be mg cosine theta. And then the part that would actually determine how quickly it is moving down the plane would be the mg sine theta, okay? But the force of friction is equivalent to the normal force times mass times uh, gravity, essentially. And the normal force in this case is cosine theta, mg cosine theta. So with that in mind, we're gonna do an example for it right now. All right, so here we got the coefficient of sliding friction, so the kinetic coefficient for friction is 0.35. At what rate does the block accelerate down the incline? This is different for a few reasons. First reason, it, it is involving our incline plane here. And we have that, but the other difference is normally we are provided the mass, so that might be an issue, but we're gonna prove that it isn't. All right, so I'm gonna write down a few things so that we don't have to keep having this picture up here. I'm gonna write down the Fn equals mg cosine theta, so we just have that. Fn equals mg cos cosine theta. And the sum of all forces essentially that we need to figure out is how much is friction pushing against this while sine is kind of trying to go that way. So here we have the force of friction. Here we have mg sine theta. And then we had the normal force, which was the downward part, and that was the mg cosine theta, which is mimicking the force normal. Okay, and I didn't draw it yet, but they, there's gravity going straight down. All right, with that in mind, we know that mass times acceleration for the overall structure would be equal to how quickly it is going to the left, which would be mg sine theta, but we would have to take away the force of friction that's acting on it because friction is gonna be opposing it in the opposite direction. So we have mass times acceleration, that's like the total force of everything that's happening for the, the entire structure, would equal mg sine theta minus the force of friction. Well, what is the force of friction? The force of friction is the force natural, which would be mg cosine theta times, times the friction coefficient. Okay, so when we're, we gotta deal with the friction coefficient. This is just the force natural. You take your force natural and you multiply by the coefficient of friction, which is 0.35. So we have mass times acceleration will equal m times g, gravity, sine of theta, we'll, we'll just keep it all in variable form for right now, minus the friction coefficient times mg cosine theta. All right, and I did this for a few reasons. I did this because remember how I said in the beginning, we wouldn't, we don't know the mass. We don't know the mass. What do we do? What do we do? Well, this has a mass, that has a mass, that has a mass. They all cancel out. It didn't matter how much this thing weighed, they're gonna divide off. Okay, so if this was two and that was two and that was two kilograms, they would all just go away anyways. All right, so those cancel out and we would be left with what we're actually looking for. I think what acceleration does the block slide down? Well, it's going to be accelerating at g, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lazy and call 10 meters per second this time, times sine of the angle, the angle is 30, minus the friction coefficient, 0.35, times g, 10, cosine of theta. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of calculations here. Get my handy dandy calculator. 10 times sine of 30, I believe, would be five, because sine of 30 is one half and 10 times one half makes five minus 0.35 cos well 0.35 cosine of I don't know why I wrote theta here. What's the theta? 30. 30 and 10 ends up being minus 3.03. .03. And if you subtract those two, 
you get your answer, which is 1.9697 meters per second squared. 97. Rounds up to 97. Okay? So that's this one. That's this beautiful example right here. And now we got another one just for practice. So we got a sled is sliding down an incline at a constant velocity. How, how unique. The incline uh, is at theta with a horizontal. Determine an expression for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay? So because it has a constant speed, the sum of all forces is going to have to equal zero. All right? And with that in mind, we would have to deal with this as solo. Let's start by drawing a picture. We got a sled going down. We don't know the angle. We don't know the mass. But we do know that it has a constant speed, and we want to know the coefficient of kinetic friction. So when you think about this, it doesn't take too much effort to think about it either, is that with all of this in mind, if you took your... So for this next example, we got a sled sliding down an incline at a constant velocity. Constant velocity and the incline is an angle theta with the horizontal. Determine the expression for the coefficient of friction. If it has a constant speed, that would indicate that the sum of all forces is equal to zero. It is in balance. It's not changing what is happening. The other way you can think about it is using the formula that we had just before, where your mass times acceleration would equal the mg sine theta, which is the, this part, mg sine theta, the, how it's going down the ramp, minus your force of friction. And if it's having a constant velocity, that would mean acceleration is zero, and the m times zero would mean that that just goes poof, goodbye, and you would have zero equals mg sine theta minus the force of friction. Well, what is the force of friction? The force of friction is the natural force, and just like our previous example where we had mg cosine of theta is equal to the force natural times the friction coefficient, which would be um, mu k times mg cosine theta. That is essentially your force of friction. So we're going to plug that in right here for force of friction. We would have 0 equals mg sine of theta minus your mk times mg cosine theta. Okay, well our main goal here is to find that coefficient of friction, and mk is the coefficient of friction, so let's kind of, you know, get that by itself, so to speak. So there's a few things you could do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably move that mg sine theta over. And if I do that, I get negative mg sine theta will equal a negative mk times mg cosine theta. And we will divide by the mg cosine theta. If we divide by the mg, actually, we're going to divide by a negative first, make both of these positive, and then we'll divide by a mg cosine theta, and that would eliminate this stuff. Goodbye. And you would have your coefficient of friction would equal mg sine theta divided by mg cosine theta, which means our coefficient of friction would be canceling the m's out, canceling the g's out, you would have your coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, would equal sine theta divided by cosine theta. And for those of you that have taken trigonometry, you would know that the coefficient of friction is equal to tan of the angle. And that is a very important detail to know. Because if you know this angle at all, you can find the coefficient of kinetic friction regardless of how much it weighs. We didn't know how much this weighs at all as long as, as, long as there's zero acceleration. Okay, if there's acceleration, things change a little bit. But if there wasn't acceleration, you could know that tan theta is equal to um, your coefficient of friction, which really kind of means it's the static coefficient, and I would argue that it is m s or for the static coefficient would equal tan theta. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, everybody, stay positive, and I will see you all later.
拜。